Hello my soccer universe, the group stage is in the books and we have lots to talk about and I wanted to start the video with a joke and then I read the early news that another legend has died, Paolo Rossi from the 82 World Cup, a golden boot win, I think he scored even four at the 78 World Cup, so one of Italy's greatest and forever remembered for his hat-trick against Brazil, but also he helped Italy win that title. So condolences to the family and so no joke at the beginning, although talking about Italy and I'm wearing Atalanta, they're no other joke, but the other <laughs> black and blue team, an absolute joke and we'll come to that. But yeah, we'll run through the games. We had nine. I talked about the games yesterday uh, already in a separate video, so we run through the nine games and we I will focus on the finals and the first one is of course that, that, that was one of the two uh, true finals Ajax and Atalanta. Ajax needed to win, Atalanta was enough with uh, for, for, for a draw, but there were misgivings on both sides ahead of the game. Um, Ajax had was you know had had a very depleted squad in many ways and with Atalanta there was this huge bust up last week where Papa Gomez and Gasparini uh, did not see eye to eye with Gasparini almost uh, resigning which the club did not um, accept and see they are playing again and uh, they pulled together it was a rather un Atalanta like performance sitting deep holding Ajax at bay, uh, not running into, uh, you know, into the drawn swords, so to speak, and Ajax actually could not play their speed game at all, absolutely not, and this was rather uh, poor from Ajax, and you never really felt that they could threaten, there was very late a chance by uh, David Klassen, it was actually all over a rather boring game, very late a chance by David Klassen, where he just, he's free ahead of the goalie, but he shoots directly at the goalie, so good on him, and then Atalanta makes it 1-0 uh, at, at a time where uh, Ajax was already man down with Grabenberg and then Luis Muriel after Florida season 85th. I, Atalanta actually playing close to a uh, full strength uh, squad so that also worked in their favor and they get the win. They won all three away games uh, unlike I think last season. So they really uh, had a good performance overall, although you always felt <laughs> they're on the teetering. But Atalanta wins that one and sends Ajax to the Europa League. Not much we can say about Midtjylland and Liverpool. Uh, Midtjylland actually probably would have deserved the win. Salah gives Liverpool early on a lead and Schultz with a penalty can equalize. I think a goal of his was disallowed uh, a little bit later, but also a Minamino goal for was disallowed. So yeah, uh, not much I want to say. PSG. That was the game from yesterday, a big tum 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 tum, uh, no to racism, and I really wanted those tarps that they used on the, on the back. How, a, how expensive are those? I mean, it's not that it matters for PSG, but how quickly were they printed? That is amazing to me in COVID times, that this can be uh, done uh, like that very, 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 very quickly. I found rather amazing. Um, all the right gestures at the beginning of the game, and yes, they uh, finish. Uh, they started from minute 15, uh, roughly, where all the players alternately li lining up in the center circle, all kneeling. Some of them pulling up the fist. Uh, some more convincing than others, but I have to say this was not down to race. I saw some uh, white guys pulling up the fist really high. Some others not, and you know at least that. The only thing, and I cut this out of yesterday's video, but unfortunately it happened, uh, I really didn't like that Erdogan, and Bajakshi is very closely related to Erdogan, used of course this to say, yeah, we don't accept racism, and I'm not sure that he's the right guy to speak there. I Let's put it that, that way, I'm not very much, I have nothing against Turkey per se, but I do not like this Erdogan guy. Let's leave it at that. Uh, the game was then rather a non-issue, I mean, when Neymar in the 21st minute made, made it 1-0, uh, the game was done, I mean, and Neymar adds two more, then uh, the weirdest decision, uh, Baka scores a goal but was judged offside, but there was before that a foul on Neymar, so it's a penalty that Mbappe, uh, Neymar wanted to pass Mbappe. 
uh, Step Steps Up makes it 3 0 Neymar, it's in the 50th, another one, then Mbappe make. Uh, now, nah, uh, top ball pulls for Beckham Mbappe. Uh, final scores for open play as well, so he gets his two Champions League goals, and PSG wins that group. Bayern Lock, yeah. <sighs> Despite Locke having only three substitutes, so they are their squad of all the ravaged Bayern playing a kind of a B team or whatever, Niklas Süle and Chupo Moting. Easy win, uh, allowing Salzburg to have at least the Europa League. And Salzburg, that was the other final, came out storming. Uh, I think Berisha hit the post, they uh, created chances and Atleti set back and held it tight. Maybe something a little bit shaky, but held it tight and then they do what Atleti does so well. From a uh, free kick from Carrasco, Hermoso can head it in. And it is just, this was I think the first really dangerous scene for Atleti and Salzburg is going one down. Um, yeah, I'm from Austria, but you know, I don't have much love for uh, Red Bull Salzburg, but I have, I have, have to say, they really played the hard shot, they put everything in there. I think there was a great chance by Soboschlai. Uh, where, you know, he loses his nerve uh, ahead of um, um, Oblak and so it was not man, meant to be and Yannick Carrasco after another nice counter attack makes it in the 86 to nil and the game was done. I Honestly, especially for a first free kick, if Ramalio was back at his uh, old strength I think he's getting too old, and if they would have a goalkeeper in goal, uh, this Stankovic which guy is just a joke. It would, might have gone a different way, but you always feel that the Salzburg defense is not feeling very, very uh, confident there. So yeah, Atleti books the place, rather deserved, but they had only two wins, two wins only, and both against Salzburg. And then we get to the train wreck, <laughs> Group B. Uh, we have two games to talk about, and maybe we should be almost done in parallel. I mean, uh, we knew that if Inter wins, then a drop in Real Madrid and Gladbach is all that is needed. Uh, which for some reason never materialized, and Real Madrid very, very, very quickly got their grip on the game. Gladbach. That was their worst performance, where they just threw everything away. All the good things that they showed, all the courage was gone. They were afraid of Real Madrid and they didn't play in the San Bernabeu. I mean, I still am a little bit... I mean, we will have the Madrid Derby this weekend in the Alfredo Di Stefano Stadium. Uh, and I th would it look better if the camera was on the other side? Maybe. Could look a little bit better. Two almost identical goals by Bonsema had had it in, gives it 2 0. It should have been 3 4. Uh, it was that clear. Gladbach was never in there. And all they needed to hope is that there will be no winner between Inter and Schachter. So, f the way the game was going all the time, it was pretty clear that the Real Madrid is going to win this one. And whoever wins uh, between Inter and Schachter could move on. And if it's a draw, Gladbach moves on. And it was the weirdest of games because Inter actually had chances, missed chances, but then uh, Schachter also got into the game. And just to note those Schachter jerseys, this is now the third season in, in, in a row that they're used and they're still awful. Schachter held back but uh, could hit them on, on the country. The longer the game went, the less Inter was coming. And it was... On one side, almost comical, the chances they missed. It was almost, uh, it was such a tight, tight game, no one wanted to really open up. So the game was bound to finish in a goalless draw. And um, in the second half, I think it was a rather Schachter that had chances. And then Antonio Conte gets very late some inspiration to put on Ericsson. And suddenly Inter has someone to create some danger put him on in the 60th or something like that, not in the 85th. There Inter suddenly had danger and you know also Alexis Sanchez came on, so uh, also another guy who uh, caused some trouble, but it was all epitomized by the clearance of the year. I always say I really love how Lukaku plays, but all his greatness was his un, 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 undoing in probably the scene that epitomizes Inter's failure. Inter makes Champions League failure into an art form minimal. I mean, uh, they could not manage to win against PSV when all it is that they needed to do. 
uh, to uh, move, move on two, two years ago. A year ago, they could not beat a, a B team from Barcelona to move on. And this time they need a win against Shakhtar, a team that they pl uh, they uh, demolished five nil just in August. And yes, they play defensively, Antonio Conte. Ah. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm saying ah because I don't like him. It's not not because I mean I am smiling over. So the big chance, Alexis Sanchez has a free header that would have gone in for sure. But who heads it on to? There's Lukaku standing and it hits him on the head. This would have been the goal. And it's not necessarily Lukaku's fault, although what is he doing so, so, so much offside, but absolutely amazing. And then uh, the Gladbach game was uh, done. There was an injury due to the goalkeeper. You could see the Gladbach players all watching, 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 because this must be excruciating, because a goal here would, could send them home. Um, but the goal was never to come, and then uh, Schachter said, okay, we're happy with the Europa, Europa League. Inter, you're going out, and that's what happened. Inter is eliminated from the group stage. Unbelievable. Unbelievable scenes. Then uh, the group C was all decided it was a little bit, uh, could Marseille uh, get into the Europa League by getting a point of Man City for one half, it looked good. The jerseys looked good, of course. Uh, this was probably my favorite game to uh, we, we should see, but Ferran Torres in the 48th made, made mix 1-0 and then they hit two more. Alvaro, even Uncle Aguero, it was in, in there as well. It was never happening, although they had, had a chance because Olympiacos also wasn't happening. I mean, um, again, a penalty. Uh, that Otavio uh, converts early, early on and then uh, late they put the ceiling through Uribe. It was never meant to be. Porto and City, clearly the class of that group. So here we have the final standings in groups A to D. Um, as I said, Bayern Atletico move on, uh, Salzburg goes to the Europa League, uh, Real Madrid and Gladbach move on, uh, Schachter Donetsk, Europa League, Inter out. That's, I think, the big story. City Porto move on, Olympiacos thanks to the head to head, and Liverpool Atalanta move on, and Ajax goes in the Europa League. Uh, the other uh, uh, groups, we already saw the first three yesterday, but now we know the PSG is confirmed group winners in another crazy group. Uh, and just look at how this uh, Bajaksha here win over United actually shifted everything there. Um, United only in the Europa League is the second biggest story. Uh, in there. Now to the overall chances, I mean you can already get it a uh, little bit here. Um, if you look background, we have the Guardiola trifecta up there, although I really think that Barcelona should not be rated that high, but they are still uh, high enough because probably of the quality of the squad, but I would honestly, of the all the group winners, uh, of, of all the top eight teams, I will Barcelona, yeah, probably even below PSG, maybe Leipzig, that's where I personally would put them, but my model says otherwise. Uh, so those three are up, Liverpool is now back, back, back in fourth place, Real Madrid, eight, and PSG only nine, uh, it's also uh, rather remarkable, also that the Italian teams, none of the three Italian teams, and arguably the three strongest Italian teams, or four strongest, are not in the Champions League, so um, I'm saying arg, 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 arguably. So yeah, uh, Lazio having the least chance of those. We have a draw coming up on Monday. Here we have the pots for the, for, for the draw. Uh, it's pretty clear. I think pretty much every team in pot one is, I don't want to say necessarily a contender, but it is, will, will be a strong draw. I mean, Real Madrid and Juventus are probably the uh, shakiest ones in there. Pot two, I think Atleti is a team that no one wants to play. Uh, the rest, I think many people will want to have. I also, uh, you see it on the bottom, computed the probabilities which matchups are possible and which are not possible. Uh, uh, thanks to the intricacies of the draw, the most likely uh, matchup is Real Madrid, Leipzig happening with 31%. Um, we have another one uh, between Juventus and Gladbach that is uh, very, very likely. I mean, everything Real Madrid, because Real Madrid has not many options because they cannot play against Gladbach and there are three Spanish teams in pot two. So uh, that limits Real's options uh, considerably. And a similar thing can be said for Gladbach because there are um, two German teams up there uh, at Leipzig, Ditto. So uh, they are a little bit uh, more likely results there. But yeah, pick your favorite teams and see what you will like. Well, that was the Champions League group stage. I have to say yesterday was maybe not as exciting, but this Inter story 
is just amazing. In many re regards, it's just a train wreck par excellence. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Add a comment below if you think you want to say a little bit more. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!